Hey folks, it's instrument time. Uh, today uh, we have another guitar and it will be an Alvarez again. So this is a much older instrument. This is actually the first steel string guitar I bought uh, other than a long unlamented 12 string that fell apart at one point. So uh, this is the first uh, fairly decent six string I got. Uh, it's not the best. Uh, it is what it is, uh, but it is interesting nonetheless. So this here is the Alvarez 50-55 Blues Man. So these were made in the uh, late 80s, uh, early 90s. I'm sure I bought this one probably about 1996. I could look in the case. Um, I bought it at Harmony House up in North Phoenix on Cave Creek Road, and they are still there I noticed uh, the other day uh, so that's kind of cool uh, nice when a small little business stays in business um, so uh, this says Alvarez artist on the inside uh, this is very different than the modern artist series so I don't want anyone to get confused comparing these older instruments to the newer ones uh, the newer ones are uh, very nice uh, in fact I think the Alvarez artist series in general is one of the best uh, values you can get uh, in that they are laminate back and sides, solid top, and uh, otherwise fairly nice appointments. Uh, if you go and look at my instrument time video on the Alvarez Baritone, you'll see what I mean. This is not that. This is an older one. So this is actually all plywood. So the top is laminate, sides are laminate, back is laminate. Um, very nice mahogany veneer on these, but it is a veneer. Uh, it has this Gibsonish sunburst. It has F holes instead of a center sound hole. Uh, that's a stylistic choice. It's a flat top. It's not an arch top. Uh, thus, the name Blues Man. The neck is fairly standard, 25 point or 25 and a half inches, 25.4 inches long. I measured the neck at 1.7 inches, so closer to 1 and 11 sixteenths than it is to 1 and 3 quarter, which you would expect of that era. Uh, the popularity of 1 and 3 quarter is a more recent phenomenon, and it is a 16 inch lower bout, so this is basically a little mini jumbo, um, pretty similar to a guild mini jumbo in size, uh, which is kind of cool. It has geared tuners with absolutely no name on them. They are not that great. Uh, definitely newer uh, guitars have better tuners. Um, these appear to be copies of Schaller's. Again, they could be Ping's, but there is not even a Ping brand name on them. So I don't know who made these. Uh, it has binding on the neck, which is nice. Uh, cream binding all around. Despite the fact that it's plywood, it has this nice center strip. Uh, the finish has settled in a little bit to the uh, actual guitar, so I don't know what it is. It's obviously not a UV catalyzed finish, uh, since those pretty much don't change. I doubt it's nitro at the same time, so it's probably some basic polyurethane finish. If someone knows, leave a comment below. Rosewood bridge, rosewood fretboard, fine mother of toilet seat inlay. Um, not so nice, guys. Um, Alvarez inlaid fairly nicely on the headstock and the heel cap actually has this really cool little inlay on it which if I hold right to the camera you can see. So <clears throat> on the used market these are actually kind of expensive. They go for about six or seven hundred dollars uh, despite the fact that like I said the construction is all laminate. Uh, you're definitely a much better sounding and better buy uh, if you bought a brand new artist series from any of your favorite retailers. So um, why these have become slightly collectible, I don't know other than the style. Um, this one has kind of old strings on it and I've got it tuned down a half step because I just took it out of the case, but it finger picks just fine. So 
I don't have a set of radius gauges, so I don't know uh, what the actual radius on the neck is. Um, it appears to be slightly tighter than uh, 16 inches, so, but it doesn't look as tight as 12 either, so it might be 14 or 15. Um, again, without the proper tools, you can't measure. Um, it's drums pretty decent. getting a little bit of fret rattle probably because it's down because I'm getting a little bit of a fret rattle probably because it's tuned down um, a half step but not too bad so an interesting piece of history uh, certainly not the uh, best guitar out there uh, sounds decent not outstanding um, finish work is actually pretty nice other than the kind of blah inlays on the uh, fingerboard uh, and there's a reason that people call some of this fake mother of pearl mother of toilet seat um, it's not that great looking uh, other than that it's pretty standard you know uh, i would not buy one of these over one of the newer artist series i think the newer artist series are much nicer guitars uh, for its time late 80s early 90s uh, this was not a bad instrument but Time has moved on, and as manufacturing has gotten better, quality control has gotten better, uh, CNC manufacturing has come into the forefront. Uh, this really is the golden age where you can buy really nice instruments for a pretty decent price. So this has been pretty much a relic of history that still works. It's still an instrument. I wouldn't feel bad playing this one. And about all I have to say. Obviously it's symmetric. They did not come with pickups. Uh, no left-handed version, although you could swap it left-handed, maybe with a little bit of intonation problem. Uh, other than that, it's your standard guitar from the early 90s, except it has these cool F-holes. So, you know, Tom, if you ever uh, want to borrow this guitar to uh, do a video on uh, my F hole, which is a song by my friend Tom Turf. Uh, Tom's welcome to borrow it. It's a funny song. Tom's a good guy. Uh, and I don't have much more to say. Uh, like I said, uh, these aren't that great a guitar, but they are a guitar, and guitars are fun. So thanks for listening. Again, if you like the content, subscribe, like, engage. The algorithm likes that. And we will see you next time on Instrument Time.